in a subdued light, there will be bad language. I had a new Volvo and the bulbs kept blowing, the fuses, and every time I got back at the weekend I had to be an out all week, I had to restock with bulbs and fuses. And the boss said it's costing me a bloody fortune. He said, What the hell's happening? So they sent the the Volvo unit, because they used to pull these you know, articulated trailers. They sent the, Vol the Volvo unit back to Volvos and they did a full electrical check and said there was nothing wrong with the electrics whatsoever. And the fitter said, I think it's you, you cunt. I said, I beg your pardon, you bald headed bastard. <laughs> and uh, he says, well, all the other trucks are all right. No one is having the trouble you're having. He says, I think it's something to do with you, you jinx. And uh, of course, what I didn't tell them that uh, when I was in the cab at night, you know, I'm not one of these for going out uh, pubbing. Uh, I used to have these little Bakelite fuses, you know, a piece of metal on a Bakelite thing, and uh, I used to rest my finger, that finger, very lightly on it, and uh, it would move. I took my finger off, stopped. And I told you, I had a pen holder clipped onto the dashboard with three pens in it. And I used to use the pen nearest to me. I thought, I'll let, I'll wear that one out, and then I'll use the one in the middle. So every time it's a customer, I used to take the pen out nearest to me, because there were three, of course. I, I took the pen out nearest to me and got out, and I said, yeah, mate, sign this. I got back in the cab and the fucking pen in the middle had moved. Three. Three. I took one out and the pen in, in the middle moved over. And I used to put it back. And this happened continuously. I never saw it move. And I thought, right, I'm going to get out now. I'm taking the pen again. Because I, I picked up a import load. Uh, no, export. A load for export over to Asia. And I got a took the pen nearest to me, and the customer says, "Hey, oh, mate, sign the shipping notes, please." I got back in the cab, and the fucking pen in the middle had moved again over to the right. So I took it out and put it back in. Then, of course, I did a collection at a farm in Shropshire, and it had been a long day, and I was rather weary. And the farmer, I drove onto the field. Uh, to his large warehouse, he says, well, we're all going now, mate. He says, I'm afraid uh, that's it for today. We'll see you in the morning at 8 o'clock. He says, you'll have a quiet night here. There's no one about. It's miles away from the main road. And uh, he says, uh, you'll have a very quiet night. I says, oh, lovely. And it was a hot day and uh, a strip top except for a box of shorts and lay on the bed at the back of the seats. And it was silent, just the sound of dicky birds tweeting. I thought, I'm going to have a lovely night's sleep. And I was dozing. And then on the windscreen at the front, I heard, and I went, huh, ah, hey, what? And I jumped out of the cab. Nobody there. Nobody at all. So I got back in the cab and uh, watched the telly, the EastEnders, and made a cup of tea. Tin of Irish stew, followed by tinners, peaches, etc. I, I, I used to smoke in the cab, it smelled like a dirty ashtray. And eventually I went to bed and I hadn't been asleep long. And once again on the windscreen, a metallic. <laughs> oh, when I, jumped, I, I got out of the cab again. There was no one anywhere, I was completely alone. And I thought, this is ridiculous. And this won't go on too long because there's so much happened. And uh, I should have wrote a few notes down. But uh, in the end, they took the truck off me and gave me another one. But the bulbs still kept blowing. Yeah. And the boss says, well, I just give up. It's, it, it's got to be you, Arthur. I says, what do you mean, me? He says, well, the other drivers aren't complaining. You're using fucking bulbs. It's costing me a fortune. All these bloody fuses. And I says, well, he says, what the hell are you doing? I says, nothing. 
Same as other drivers. Some nights I go out for a drink with them, you know, down to a local pub if it's park up with the other drivers. But some nights I'm alone and I do crosswords, read the paper, watch my little portable telly. Uh, but I didn't tell them that I was doing this thing, resting my finger on them little bake light fuses and they were moving. Lift finger off, stop moving, put finger on, moving again. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah. What else? I'll leave it at that. Yeah, spooky. So, uh, of course, I've seen spirit, as I told you. As a child, that man stared at me and then just uh, vanished in front of my eyes. And in Cyprus, the youth, dressed in eye, fishy vest and underpants, walked, through, walked from the door across the room, passed straight through the wall. But as stiff as a plank. The hair stood on end, go out of bed shaking, put the light on. Well, the other two, West Indian, English bloke, I said, I've just seen the ghost walk through the wall. Nah, he said he come, dreaming, having a nightmare. I would tell us wide away. And they, those two incidents were sticking in my mind the rest of my life. If you see something like that, that's it. It sticks in your mind for the rest of your life. So I've had a lifetime experience because I've always had a great interest in the paranormal and there's a hell of a lot more but uh, I don't want to go on for too long and I'll leave it at that. Right, go a cup of tea, Andrew's not here yet. <clears throat> I am going to do it, as I told uh, Gollum, uh, this microphone is very sensitive, I'm going to turn it up maximum and uh, after midnight I'll close the windows and the doors and you'll hear probably cars going by out there but it will be silent in here. And if I hear any noises, often my people in the court, when they flush the toilets, yeah, but I'll, I'll practice, I'll find something to rest my finger on and I'll practice on this smooth padding in, in front of me. And uh, we'll see if I can pick anything up. And if anyone's going to pick anything up, I will. Right, I'm off. Cheers. <laughs> I am. I look as though I've got a gorgeous suntan as I've come back from... Mallorca, but I haven't, it's only because it's uh, subdued light. Right. Now, oh, come on, Arrow. Here we go. <laughs> Bye. Is it still recording? Oh, for God's sake. Here we go. <laughs> Once again. Bye. <laughs>